Hey Carew, just uh, enjoyed our phone conversation on the way back from Walla Walla today. Um, and I told you I'd tell you the story about going down and watching the singer-songwriters at Prodigal Son. Um, so basically, you know, recently I've been trying to do a little bit more music um, related things. And um, so I played, I told you about the first open mic I went and played. Um, last Thursday in January, I also played an open mic. Um, and it wasn't as fun, but it was, it was still okay. They, they were doing a blues jam at the beginning, and uh, the jam's not really my thing. Maybe I did tell you about this already. Um, and they did the jam at the beginning, um, and there were people there to watch the music, but they get bored during the jam because you just, people go around and everyone's trying to play together, and it tends to be not as high quality as, like, the people who have prepared something to play at the open mic. So people left before the open mic actually started, which was kind of a bummer. But um, nonetheless, it was fun and it was it was good. I enjoyed performing. Um, so that was on a Thursday. Then the following Saturday night at uh, the Prodigal Son, there was, uh, there's a guy named um, James Dean Kindle. And um, he's a singer-songwriter and he's had a band, uh, J.D. Kindle and the Eastern Oregon Playboys, and they've they've been playing around here for years now, and you know he's probably in his mid to late twenties um, at this point, and uh, and so he organized this uh, singer songwriter in the round, meaning that uh, I guess you know I thought they were going to be in the middle of the room and people were going to sit around them, but I guess this means they all take turns doing the songs, and so he it was it was uh, J D Kendall. Um, a couple other guys whose names I cannot remember for the life of me, but I really enjoyed their stuff. They were great, high energy. And then um, Mitch Monchalon, who's the kid who played soccer. And actually, Mitch, one of my favorite kids from the high school playing soccer, and he uh, he actually he was a senior the last year I coached the JV team at the high school, and he was the captain of the team, and he was a, he was the um, uh, I think the only player in recent history that was. Uh, first team all league um for from Pendleton so that was kind of cool and he's a really nice guy he's he's interesting creative talented um but he uh so he played um original music as well and um so I went down to watch this on on Saturday night and I haven't spent a lot of time at Prodigal Son it's a it's a little brewery it's a microbrew and uh they serve music and they've got a great space in an old building um, that they've kind of modified and done some stuff with. And um, uh, Eric doesn't like their food, so, you know, I go out to eat with Eric often and we don't go there. But um, anyway, I went down to, to hear the music, and I got there and the place was packed. Uh, it was unbelievable. Uh, and there was really no way to get close to the musicians. We're on, they were in one far corner of the room, and I was at the other end. And, uh, and so I just kind of sat down there and listened to them, and I couldn't actually see them from where I was sitting um, because there were tables all packed in in the middle. Um, so, uh, and I couldn't actually hear the music real well. I couldn't understand the lyrics because we were so, I was so far away. But I'm sitting in the back, and they started playing, and, you know, there's good energy. They sounded good. It was nice. Mitch did a good job with his. Uh, wasn't quite as polished as the other guys. But he he still did a good job, and it was it was really cool to see the live music, original music, um, coming out of Pendleton here, and uh, I enjoyed it. Um, saw a lot of people I knew, not a lot, but you know some people I knew, and um, but uh, so I'm sitting there listening, and actually a couple got one of the guys who had been at the open mic um, and played original songs came in too, and he was kind of in the same place. He was with his girlfriend, and he was in the back, and he couldn't get close enough up. And so, people kept coming in. I was wearing my Vibram Five Finger shoes, and people kept coming up to me and talking to me about my shoes. Um, so, you know, I, I was getting distracted from the music. Anyway, having a good time. Um, and then this woman comes up and starts talking to me, and she was probably in her 50s, and she's she's wearing a, uh, a knitted cap with a marijuana leaf on the front. And she goes on, and she starts going on about how she's, in the last year, she's dedicated her life to making marijuana legal. 
and she's actually changed her name to Sherry Wana, and uh, uh, or Cheryl Wana or something like that. Anyway, and she gave me this card type thing, you know, with them, and she's going on and on about it, and you know, um, and so I had like a 15, 20 minute conversation with her, which meant that I couldn't listen to the music, and and you know, and she's nothing's <laughs> nothing's uh, more annoying at times than somebody who's been reborn to their purpose. And you know can't can't stop talking about it. Anyway, I, I actually really enjoyed the conversation, and she was kind of trippy and 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 awesome. Uh, so I then uh, I, I did tell her at one point that I didn't smoke marijuana, but uh, but it didn't didn't slow down the conversation at all. Um, and so then, as the audience started clearing out after about an hour and a half or so. Um, spaces opened up up front, so I actually got up and and moved up front where I could see, and I sat next to Mitch's dad, and uh, and this guy who was uh, the the guy who I met at the open mic, whose name I for the life of me I can't remember. And uh, by now they were kind of running out of songs, and and they'd gone through stuff, and you know these guys, the the three singer songwriters who not Mitch but the other guys, are, you know they're they're stereotypical hipsters, you know. And they've got a group of people up there who know, kind of are in on the jokes with them. And, and they say stuff and they look at each other and they laugh. And, you know, and I'm sitting there and you feel like an outsider because you don't understand what's funny about what they said or what they're doing. And there are times when they give each other knowing looks and, and stuff. So it was, you know, and it's kind of, it's interesting because you experience a little bit of um, uh, insecurity from watching them do that. And, well, at least I, I do. I'm like, oh, what are they laughing at? I wish I understood that. Um but uh, anyway, it was it was fun to watch that, and they were clearly having a good time. And they got a group of people kind of after after things had cleared out. There were a group of people who were their buddies who came and sat up front and were and were bantering back and forth. And as they got down to the end, um, I took this a little, I, and I started taking some pictures and some video. And I'll cut in a couple of pictures right here, and then I'll cut in some video. But the first picture you'll see is the the, the third guy over is is playing a song. Um, and he was super high energy. Actually, he was super high energy. That guy in particular um, was super high energy, um, and clearly more about the energy than the musical content. I mean, he was good musically, but you know, he was he was all about the energy and just. And so, next time they came around with him after I took this picture, he did this little uh, little uh, song where he actually was being a complete hipster. And ironically, singing a song from an animated movie, and you'll see that clip right here. So anyway, after after he sang his song, Mitch went again, and this is a picture you're seeing now of of Mitch singing, um, and uh, you know, like I said, Mitch did a good job as well. And actually, Mitch had his girlfriend come up and sing a song while he played, which was which was kind of nice. They did uh, Time After Time by Cindy Lauper. Um, so like I said, they they kind of they'd already been playing for an hour and a half or longer at this point, so uh, they were running out of things to do. Um, but it was, uh, so anyway, it was really fun to watch this. Um, you know, the venue could have been better. They could have, uh, you know, I kind of want to hear the music. Um, like you were talking about at the house party and you could actually hear the music. It was great. And in this, there was so much going on and so many people not really paying attention to the music very closely that that was kind of a downer. Um, anyway, one last thing before, um, before you goes, I was going to, uh, you probably can't tell the difference, um. But I put these extra light strings on my guitar. And they sound really nice. And actually, they're easier on your fingers to play. Whoops. So, yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, 
I was going to play you this song by, uh, it's kind of short, a short song, but another Mountain Goat song that's depressing. So I'll play that really quick, and if I don't have time, I'll cut it out of the video. Sleeping off your demons when I come home. Spittle bubbling on your lips, fine white foam. I am young and I am good. It is a hot Southern California day. If I wake you up, to pay and alone in my room I am the last of a lost civilization I vanish into the dark and rise above my station rise above my station But I do wake you up, and when I do, you blaze down the hall and you scream. I'm in the bedroom with the headphones on, a deep in a dream chamber. But then I'm awake, and I'm guarding my face, hoping you don't break my stereo, because it's the one thing. in waves by a strong and thick vein hand one of these days I'm gonna wriggle up on dry land So anyway, that song, actually, and the name of that song is Consider the Tetrapod by the Mountain Goats. Um, and I kind of, I don't know, I, I like the imagery and the kind of, in a sick, twisted way of the song. But I don't know if you noticed, so I was actually playing this guitar really lightly, picking it fairly lightly and letting it ring. And the, the extra light strings just sound really nice on it. And, you know, I, what was the other thing? Uh, playing like this. It actually sounds way better on this guitar than the medium strings that I've always used on it. Here we are again and we're looking at each other as if each other were to blame. You get the point. Anyway, uh, so... That's all I got for today, and if I haven't run out of time and cut this out, um, I will assure you that I'm still dead in Pendleton, Oregon, and I can't wait to see your video when you get a chance to cut it together. Take care and enjoy the Super Bowl.